Now then, team, a warm welcome to the High Performance Humans podcast. It's Andy here, and I am so incredibly grateful to be getting joined by the absolutely opulent and, and, and absolutely immaculate Samantha McLean from Elite Agent. She is the editor-in-chief and has been a tremendous lighthouse for an industry that's gone through so much change and continues to go through ridiculous amounts of change and challenges and triumphs and and trials um sam thank you so much for joining me how are you i'm very well thank you and thank you for having me um it's the pleasure's all ours it really really is and, and i'm really ex- i was really excited to have you come on to the show and you were one of my first my one of my first targets to to come on to this little fledgling show of ours because um one thing that's really really impressed me uh and is i've been such a an admirer from a distance um especially over the course of this last uh, over the course of this last six to 12 months has been how you have managed to evolve and adapt to the incredibly high paced changes that are going on in the landscape, not only in the real estate space, but obviously in the media space as well with artificial intelligence and so on and so forth, all the things that have come along with that. Um, The rate of acceleration of change across the board has been insane. And what I've found with you has been, there's lots of people that try and commentate on it, but with yourself, the one of the best, coolest bits that I've seen from you is the fact that you've been one of the only ones in my humble opinion in my little world that's actually managed to be able to articulate the rate of change in a way that's actually palatable to to the consumer base that you're that you are broadcasting to so I really am looking forward to having a chat about how you cope with change and all that sort of stuff uh, because you are in essence very much a high performing human being a leader in your field so first off though for those people that don't know who you are, which is probably about seven people, um, give us a bit of an elevator spiel on who you are, what your background is, and uh, what you've been up to. Yeah, so uh, obviously you've said my name a couple of times. So Samantha McLean from Elite Agent. Um, Elite Agent is a publisher slash education source, news source for the real estate industry. Up until recently, we had a print magazine as well. Uh, we have a podcast where I'm usually asking the questions, so this is a bit uh, this is a bit unusual for me. So be gentle. Um, yeah, my background before real estate was nothing to do with real estate. Actually, I was uh, in technology and corporate jobs, mostly selling um, million dollar IT solutions. So the fact that I'm kind of interested in AI and other things now really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that knows me really well anyway. Mm, Absolutely. And have you found that you've always, is it always been an affinity with technology generally, or is it something that you found you looked at and you were like, God, I need to get across this, Uh, you know, back in the day, you found that that was the space to be in. Yes, actually, I was telling um, some people this story the other day, I was you know, 19, I just started university, I was going to be an accountant. Uh, I really didn't like the whole debit credit thing. I found it really boring, but I knew accounting well. Um, So I quit my job, I quit my cadetship, I was working for Ernst & Winnie at the time, they were paying for my uni degree, it was a big deal. Um, And then went and found a job with another accounting firm as a computer operator, just because I needed the money. But that job, that one job just working as a computer operator I found that me and the computer liked each other we spoke to each other and I could work <laughs> out what it wanted from me and therefore I became a source of um, uh, information rather for all the professional staff who were all struggling with how do we use this computer that's shown up on our desk and that went from one thing to another so I then became the technology manager of that firm at 22, which was a job that was well beyond my capability at the time, but I just said yes and then figured the rest out later. Um, I actually studied the Microsoft Certified Engineering course and I became like one of the first women in Australia, I think the first in New South Wales to be a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. Not a lot of people know that about me. Wow. Um, Then I sold the first voiceover frame relay network for 
British Telecom when they came to Australia. We were trailblazers in that area as well. And the same with ATM and the same with um, IP technologies or the internet. So I've always believed in the internet. I still believe in the internet. It's here to stay. <laughs> we should all get on board. It, yeah, I don't. I think that goes without saying. It ain't, it ain't going to go away anytime soon as much as some people still try and think and hope and pray that that's going to be the case, right? That we'll go back to caveman times at some stage, but it ain't happening, let's face it. Um, yeah. Now... Uh, let's get stuck into the meat and potatoes of this thing. Uh, high performance humans. I personally believe uh, that there are four key elements to high performance humans being success, influence, connection, and happiness. Um, but one thing that I'm asking all of our guests is what a high performing human means to them, what that means to them or what they define as a high performing human. So Sam, what does it mean to you to be a high performance human being? I haven't had a lot of time to think about this, but I think it has something to do with the ability to go after your dreams. Um, and, you know, because a lot of people might sit there and think, um, you know, it's too hard or I could never do that. And it doesn't matter how big or small that is. I believe that if you can come up with a plan and you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the first step, it's the taking the steps um, to an eventual goal that, that make you a high performer. I love that. That is uh, being as you, 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 you're setting the bar fairly high there to be perfectly honest, in my opinion, to the ability to go after dreams. What a wonderful way to surmise um, what it means to be a high performer, because the purpose of this podcast, everybody is to really break down, you know, the whole notion that success is the be all and end all when it comes to um, a holistic lifestyle. Right. And, and success can be defined in all sorts of different ways anyway. Um, but um, what Sam's just mentioned there for me it, it is almost perfect in its essence. Uh, the the ability to uh, take what is good about you and utilize it to the utmost of how you can get the most out of life, right? I think that is that's an absolutely wonderful way of putting it. So you're setting the bar high, setting the bar real high. Um, <laughs> My, my alternate answer to that was to tell you about how my husband dug up, you know, 10 metres of concrete yesterday, because I think that's pretty high performing too. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody knows, anybody that, that does know uh, who Sam is referring to would know that that is very much, uh, uh, that is that is an absolute achievement. Um, it's an achievement for bloody anyone. Um, yep. But anyway, that is... <laughs> <laughs> that is tremendous. Uh, well, yeah. make sure that he gets a, make sure that he gets a pat on the back from for that one in a big way. Um, oh wow, that's impressive. Um, now, I wanted to go through this whole topic of change with you because, like I mentioned at the top of this, I do believe from what I've seen um, that you have been a really strong example of how change can be harnessed um for the betterment of oneself but also for the for the greater community through which who which you serve so um first thing i wanted to ask you though sam is how do you cope with change because we've got to look at the media landscape like you mentioned until very recently you had a print publication of a, a of a, and it was a a magazine that was very much industry leading uh, and it was and it was an example set you'd won a stack of awards for it and all the rest of it um but how does how do you cope with change like do you do you sometimes does it hit you like a ton of bricks and it takes you time to adapt or are you one of those ones that can quickly make a 90 degree turn yeah I think uh, the answer to that is I cope with it the same way that everyone else does is it happens I swear I curse uh, I wonder why is this happening to me again mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then generally I'll work out a way through it like or, or you know like what can I do to either think about this differently or what can I do to see the opportunity in what's just happened? You know, like I, I tend to talk to, I talk to myself a lot. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But I do. It, really, it doesn't sound half as crazy as what we think because, um, and I really like the fact that you uh, mentioned there that you swear and curse and F and blind and all the rest of it and go, why me? I actually was just listening to a podcast um, before, earlier today, um, and it was Mark Boris, who was having a chat to Dan Carter. 
um, uh, the uh, you know one of the all time greats in rugby union, and and Dan said something very similarly that when he suffered a setback, and um, the very first thing he did was allow himself to feel right. He, he you know his he said that his wife um, has got a really strong understanding that if he suffers a real setback, that she gives him space for twenty four hours to. Um, be with it, be within himself, and to cry, and to vent, and to what have you, before he can start to process it. Um, how important do you feel that is that that we give ourselves that breathe that half a step of breathing space to be human before we get into action mode? Yeah, I think it's really important. And um, I mean, look, from everyone that I've interviewed as well, they all say the same thing. Um, Fiona Blaney calls it hippo time. She actually wrote an article on it, you know, like I just want to wallow in my own self-pity for a while. That's what you call hippo time. And um, everybody needs that to to just, you know, almost, uh, you know, internalise what's happened or what the, the external factor is that's changed. You need that particularly if it's the loss of something or someone like if it's you've lost your job, you need time to grieve that. If, if it's a, you know, a relationship that's broken down, you need time to grieve that. You know, if you move on too quickly, have you really dealt with what has just happened? And so, yes, I truly believe 100% that, you know, the swearing and the why me is necessary, but just so long as it's not for too long. Absolutely, because the one thing that we can't ignore is the pace at which things are changing in, from an external point of view. The stuff that um, that we as a singular cannot control is the, is the rate of change that's coming through um, with technology, with economic landscapes and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, when I wanted to ask, when it comes, because you've, you've, like I said, you've really got a real strong grip on the progression of AI, not, you know, not to say that any of us are like world-class you know, experts because we're all still learning how this whole thing's going to play out. Um, but you more than most that I've seen, you seem to have really um, embraced it in a way that very few have managed to do. Now, I wanted to ask though, you know, talking about the swearing and effing and blinding little phase, when AI, because AI has been around for donkeys, you know, the predictive text and so on and so forth. Um, but when when AI's became sort of much more into the conscious world, when it really started affecting things quite seismic, seismic, seismically, how did you first handle this whole thing? Because there are so many people, and you would see it time and time again, you yeah. would see there's so many people that are still just frying at the brain at the concept of it. Yeah. Well, I was asleep and I didn't wake up for about a month after it happened. And that would be most people. So chat GPT, if that's what you're referring to, the open AI product um, has been around or the large language model has been around for quite some time. It just happened that on the 30th of November, 2022, they decided to put an interface on it that everyone could use. Thank you, Energy Australia, Telstra, and all of those people that have taught us how to use a chatbot. And so that's what caused the brain explosion for everyone is that all of a sudden we had access to this thing that was free and had no learning curve. Mm. So, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, and then all of a sudden things exploded. But I, I would say also, like, if I could just backtrack a little bit, um, yeah, so I was asleep when that happened and I was doing all the things that you normally do in the lead up to December 22, including really wanting a break. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really till over Christmas that I thought, oh, I better go have a play with this chat GPT thing and see what it can do. And I asked it to write a blog post. It could do that pretty easily. I asked it to write a bio. It could do that pretty easily. I happened to be working on the New South Wales CPD courseware. So I asked it a few questions on real estate legislation and it passed that with flying colors and I kind of thought uh oh this is um this is pretty interesting this is going to have quite an impact on on uh, on life as we know it so I guess what I decided to do was I just decided to jump in jump in and have a look and have a play with it and I guess so the other thing I want to say is <clears throat> I don't I don't feel like any of us including me like I'm just I'm playing 
I'm choosing to play and I'm choosing to play with it in public so that hopefully people can learn something from me as I play with it and find out things that it can do. I would say that none of us could sit here on, you know, maybe Sam Altman or any of those people that are like high up in the, you know, in the development echelons of Microsoft, Google, X, all of those people could probably say that they know a lot more about what it is and where it's heading. But for me, I think the best, I thought that the best thing I could do is be a leader in the field just by playing with it and like literally playing with it in public, which is what you're seeing me do on AI powered agents is, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do from one day to the next. Things keep changing. Um, one day a prompt that I've tested will work the next day it won't, but that's part of the whole, I think, you know, adaptability and people are talking about AQ as the new EQ. And that's probably really needs to be part of, the high performing human model is that you need to be able to adapt to things because it will, there will come a time where, you know, you'll have to look at things as, well, that didn't work. So instead of thinking, Oh, well, we've always done it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, you're going to, people are going to need to really like park that mm. and think, well, we've always done it this way. Okay. That didn't work. Swear. Now, what am I going to do instead? And that's what adaptability question is, if you like. It's that ability to pivot when something doesn't work the way that you thought it would or did and be able to do something new. And I guess, in essence, that's what I'm doing too because after I started playing with this, I, I held a webinar earlier in the year and I actually had on the, you know, I'm going to show you how this thing works. I'm going to show you how it applies to real estate and we're going to talk about whether or not I have a job. <laughs> moving forward yeah and, I mean you know I, like let's just put it out there I might not have a job moving forward in mm -hmm. uh, May of this year I saw a uh, an ad on seek for a copywriting prompt engineer mm. now that was hard because I pride myself on my ability to pen something meaningful mm. uh, I've made a fairly good living out of it in a whole range of directions but are you gonna you know sort of reduce me to being a prompt engineer wow so um but you know yes yes maybe maybe but maybe i can view that thing not as something that's going to take my job but as something that can assist me to do a better job yeah and 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 i wanted to and i, I will dig into that um uh, in a little bit when it comes to you know how high performing humans uh, can utilize ai to become even greater in their performance i wanted to ask though um, with regards to the you know the adaptability quotient um and and really dig into that in a practical sense because the ramifications realistically of not being able to adapt um even remotely let alone at the pace that life is changing the the financial ramifications that could come through that could be catastrophic and you will you you have felt that in a tremendous sense which has forced you to make real huge um not just financial but emotional decisions around um you know your business and and your the, the thing that you've been building for years and years and years and years um i wanted to because I wanted to ask when you made the decision to finish off the print of Elite Agent magazine, two things. One, how emotional was that decision? Because this is something you've been working on for so long um, and done so well with. Um, how emotional a decision was that? And, and, and realistically, like, how much did you wrestle with that decision? Yeah, there are two sides to this coin and I'll be really, really transparent with you because I probably haven't had this conversation publicly with anyone. But the first thing is, is I cried for two weeks. That's, you know, because you have to grieve the loss of something, as I was saying before. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, if I was really honest, we were just doing the same thing. 
same thing over like it was almost like a formula and I suppose as a creative person uh you know things get too stable and I want to break them you know I mm-hmm. want to I, I actually want to sort of think well how can I do this differently or better are we still serving the people that read us um all that sort of thing and I always just really wanted to try some new things um because being in the same job for 10 years is a long time oh, which yeah. is essentially what it's been for me but I never had the capacity so you know how um Josh Fegan, I think, talks about potential and capacity. So if you think you've got this much potential, but you're at 100% capacity, you've got no nowhere to move. You actually need to create some capacity somehow to be able to try new things and, you know, explore new avenues and things like that. So I suppose for me, I felt like there was more in me, but I also felt like if I didn't give something up, then I would never be able to explore that because there's only so many hours in a day, as as everyone says. So um, so I really had to look hard at everything I was doing and what was going to bring me joy. And really, you know, the things like, um, you know, Transform brings me joy, the podcast brings me joy, hanging out with people brings me joy, Um you know, the magazine has brought me a lot of joy over the years, but it's also been at times a bit of a, I'm not going to say, you know, like a rock or anything like that, but it does, everyone wants to be in the magazine or on the magazine over the years. You wouldn't believe how many people approach me to be on the cover of the magazine, Mm -hmm. but what's that really about when the values of elite agent are elevate, educate, entertain? Um, It felt to me to be perpetuating something that we didn't want to in the real estate industry, which was. So, you know, there was, there was a whole lot of emotion that went on with that, which actually had nothing to do with, um, you know, the, the changes that were coming, but, but I felt like within me, it was time for a change and it was time for something new and you know it might actually I've been threatening to write this book for years and that might actually get done next year because I've actually given myself a bit of capacity to do something new yeah so it happens it you know it happens to everyone and then I I guess you know the third reason was that Australia Post people don't realize how expensive the magazine is to produce Mm. so Australia Post since the beginning of the pandemic basically put postage up on us every quarter wow And, and the pandemic also the unintended consequences of the pandemic um shortage of paper so the price of paper has been going up for you know for the last couple of years as well unbeknownst to everyone so Mm. you know it's time to time to pause that and I'm not saying it'll never come back but you know I really needed some time and space to think about what it was I really wanted to do to create what served everyone best and I'm actually still going through that process to be honest which is completely understandable given the volume of effort, love and attention that you've been putting into that thing, right? Um, completely understandable. Um, did you feel that when you saw this AI boom, this chat GPT, um, you know, breaking of, of, of the barrier sort of situation, did you feel that that was almost acting as, because it that because you saw that and within yourself within your um tech geek nerdy self uh, as we all are we all have elements of you felt oh that's a nice new thing and that's something cool to did you feel that your decision around the print magazine was made that little bit easier because you felt you had something really tangible that you could sink your teeth into was that a help with that not really Okay. Like I knew, I knew I was interested in it. And so I suppose that's why I just decided to, so what you see on AI power, like elite agent is still like number numero uno, mm-hmm. but elite agent has a certain brand and a style. And there are things that you will never see on elite agent. Um, whereas what I wanted was I wanted the freedom to explore this thing on the other side Yeah, and if, and write a 10 word, blog post if I wanted to I can't do that on elite agent 
like right. or or you know generate some hero images of our cover agents with AI I can't do that on the lead agent so this <laughs> you know so I just I, I really wanted to do something I just and I look I really didn't have anything in mind when I started that blog other than I just think I'll just play with this thing in public love it so, I love it. It's it's almost like you've you're just giving yourself permission to sort of let your hair down professionally speaking, and uh, because obviously with a media publication, but obviously with you know, you could transfer that to most brands that most people have in most industries. You know, they have a certain set standard and value set and what have you that that really need to stick to. But they we all have other or you know alter egos sort of thing that we want to um be able to explore and and for yourself to be able to do that publicly and have the um confidence for want of a better word to do that publicly is is something that i think uh, people can actually learn a little bit from it's absolutely fine to be this person in this space and and sort of change your you know bring out a different side to you in a different space and i think that's absolutely commendable now i wanted to bring your expertise uh, you know your your thought leadership into play now a little bit um and really explore top ways that um that ai chat gpt uh, open ai chat gpt um can can assist high performing humans to uh, perform to an even higher level again because as you will have been talked at various times you know there's there is that is from the masses that inherent fear that AI is taking over people and, you know, we're all going to be run by robots and all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, so and, and for a lot of those high performing, like high performing humans, a lot of them will have that in inane sort of DNA ability to be able to do what you're doing, which is, an, is which is adapt and change and, 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 and take on and whatnot. But there'll be a lot of people in roles that are very much in the crosshairs from an efficiency point of view, from a capacity point of view. So for for people that are high performing that want to remain so in in a, this ever evolving world what are the sort of the top two or three areas or facets or or or, or um, actions that can be taken to help them to do that to be more of a high performing human more often uh okay that is a huge question um <laughs> i'm going to and i'm going to try and break it down so I, you know, using AI to be a high performing human, number one, I think that you got to look after humanity first, because I think it was, as I started to play with tools like chat GPT over Christmas, I, a Tony Robbins quote came to me uh, and it still sort of sits with me is that the quality of your life will be dictated by the quality of your questions. So your ability to ask a better question will um, dictate the quality of your life. Now I've sort of been through times in my life where I am very clear on the questions that I should be asking myself and other people. And then I've been in places at times in my life, whether it's for mental health reasons or busyness reasons or stress reasons or whatever, that I haven't been clear on those questions. Mm. And, you know, so this is what I mean by looking um, at the human side of it first, like I, at the beginning of the year decided to, you know, get myself into better shape in terms of exercise, not drinking so much, um, you know, not eating so much, to, just little things. Right. But, you know, it made a whole lot of difference, particularly giving up alcohol to everything. Like it made me think more clearly, um, it made me more creative. It made me able to see things that I just couldn't see before. And don't get me wrong, I don't think I'm an alcoholic or anything like that, but I just think I was probably consistent. Um, so, so, that's, um, so that's one thing. And I guess if, if I could overlay that onto your question about AI, you still, even with tools like ChatGPT, even though there is a layer of I know inherently how to use this because I know how to type things into a keyboard. The I think the um if if you're not typing the right things into the keyboard, like if you don't have the clarity to ask what you want, 
then that chatbot isn't going to give you anything amazing. It's just going to give you average. Mm -hmm. And if we play this out over, let's play this out over 12 months. At ARIC this year, Tom Ferry said, who's using ChatGPT? Third of the hands went up, I reckon. That was May. Elite Retreat, Jeff Turner got up on stage and said, who's using ChatGPT? 80% of the hands went up, but I think my tribe are uh, like, they're a forward thinking bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, like in, in one of our workshops the other day, who's using chat GPT, all the hands went up. But I firmly believe that there's this thing called an AI line. And I don't know if you're seeing it, but I'm seeing it now too, which is I'm looking at people's LinkedIn posts. I'm looking at people's content and I'm now looking at with a lens of was this created by the robot? Mm. Mm. And I'm seeing it more and more. I've seen it from a, you know, from even from a large franchise director where you can actually sort of, I looked at that post and went, that is so chat GPT. <laughs> and I won't say who Busted. it was. Busted. I won't get bastard. But <clears throat> so so this is why I'm saying as a human, I think you need to have your wits about you to be able to get the most out of the tools. Mm. Because if you're a human without your wits about you, if, whatever that means, is that the generic stuff that's going to be coming our way in the next six to twelve months is going to be all sorts of shades of, I think um, I called it greige, you know, some sort of shade between grey and beige and everyone is going to sound and look the same and it will be the people that can actually use the robot to create capacity but put their own spin on things or use it better that will win the next 12 to 18 months, in my opinion. I really, really like that. And I really like that distinction of having an AI line because we as human beings can be somewhat skeptical um, and, and it's sort of by nature that we are, um, you know, really sort of looking for uh, looking for these sorts of things. I think that that is a tremendous sort of line to be drawn in the sand that uh, a lot of people, because a lot of the vernacular around artificial intelligence is the saving of time, right? It's the time efficiency side of things. However, what I really like about what you articulated just then is that you are highlighting the fact that yes, you can be really efficient with it, but it's not going to be you. And it's going to become a lot more clear as to whether it is you or whether it's some, something pretending to be you. Um, and that is, that's, a, it's a wonderful distinction because you're right. There'll be some, there'll be some, all of a sudden there'll be someone who has barely said boo to a goose coming out with this, immaculate piece of whatever that is so out of character right and it's so off brand if you try if you put it into a into a business sense um that it will sort of stick out like a sore thumb um yeah. and and so from from your perspective uh you know playing with it as you do and this is where gang if you're not it, 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 for those that are listening if you if you are not following Sam with um, her AI powered agents um, blog series, you need to, because although Sam was concerned about that CCAD and, and, you know, being an engineer as opposed to being a copywriter, I think the fact that Sam's absolute power is coming out more so because she's talking about something that can have that effect on the copywriting space. Right. I think that's probably one of the reasons why you're doing so damn well with it, in my opinion, because it's so clearly still you that's having a yarn about it. Um, so very clearly you, and I don't think there's going to be an AI wrote an AI bloody bit of kit under the sun. That's going to replicate you. But anyway, um, uh, so I think, I think Google's starting to think I'm a real estate agent in runaway Bay though. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think my SEO on that, I'm, ta I'm taking on the big guns up there, but anyway. <laughs> and you know what? Some of them will probably go, Oh shit, she's becoming an agent. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, no not not, not not at all. But I guess the other thing too, the, the other thing that I've been thinking deeply about on this note is um, it's like spending and saving. Like, so it's actually depositing and withdrawing. So if you're going to, and and I, I like, don't get me wrong, I highly recommend using the robot for first drafts and things like that. And, and we do. And now on Elite Agent, if ChatGPT's had a hand in something, you'll actually see 
it as a co-author, like because we mm. believe ethically that we should be putting it out there and we still don't know what it means for publishers and things like that, but we believe we should be open and transparent about that. But you should, like, and, and agents uh, should use the robot to spend time drafting letters, like open home letters, um, auction letters, emails, all sorts of things, because as Bo said to me, like Bo won Transform this year, she said she left school in year 10. She often couldn't find the words to respond to something in the in the tone or the style that she wanted to, and ChatGPT has helped her with that. So she's gone from having, you know, hundreds of emails in her inbox to having a few. Mm. Like, And the overhead of the cognitive burden of having 400 emails you got to action in your inbox is huge mm -hmm. so being able to smash through that is amazing but what it is about for me and hopefully for a lot of other people come to realize this is that it's about what you do with the time you save so if you're going to save over here then you've got to spend it wisely so what i'm saying is um, you know, save your time writing your letters and your emails and your digital communication, but then go and block out another hour to connect with more people face to face. Mm. Because you should have time to do with that. If people say, I don't have time to call that person or I don't have time to meet someone. I would say, you know, get the automated jobs out of the way, but then spend that time connecting with the people. Similarly, you know, for like something like social media, Everyone thinks, oh, this is great. I can post every day with chat GPT. I can create so many posts. I'll be have so much content out there. I'll be an influencer in no time at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I think no, I think save time with chat GPT to create a couple of really cracking posts and then spend the time that you save commenting and engaging and connecting with other people on social media. Mm -hmm. um, because people will appreciate that a whole lot more. So, you know, I think, um, and I ended up, you know, having a bunch of these spend, save, spend, save things and ended up posting it as a carousel on LinkedIn because I, I do think that it's not just, don't just use AI to become more efficient. Of course, do that. But when you're going, all right, well, I've got all this time now, what am I going to do with it? You've got to look for the human things to make a difference. Absolutely. And I think, you know, and, and, and you could apply this to listing agents, you know, 80% of what they do is very much the transaction and the values in that 20% of the, of the, 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 the human bit that goes on top of the transaction. Right. And, and you're absolutely spot on the, the, the cool thing that I think AI and chat GPT is bringing out to those that would care to pay attention um, is that, the opportunity to become more human because of the fact that we don't have to do as many robotic tasks is it's a horizon that if you know people like yourself have embraced it so wholeheartedly um and there's a few of our few friends in, in the industry that have done it so incredibly well that the level of success that they've achieved off the back of embracing it because of the fact they've allowed themselves to be more human more often is quite mental. It's, it's quite insane. And, and these, these, you know, and we're looking at small, small players, you know, one, two, three people, agencies and whatnot that are starting to become market leaders on REA and what have you, because of the fact that they, their ability to be agile with the technology, giving them more of a chance to be more human more often is all of a sudden letting some of these, nice people all of a sudden rise to the top because they've got more time to be nice um well, that, that that's it and what you just said there is what makes this time so wild i mean what a time to be alive oh. you could be you could be ahead of a franchise or you could be the most junior of receptionists like let's just say i came to work in a real estate office right now I'm a junior receptionist straight out of school um, and I have decided to spend the 20 bucks a month on chat GPT four mm -hmm. to be my assistant. Now um, 
in years gone by, you had to be like a, a high performing agent to afford an assistant mm-hmm. to manage your calendar, answer your emails, all the rest of it. But just, just picture the playing field has just been completely leveled because a junior receptionist who is, let's say my daughter's age, who actually calls chat GPT, the PA, <laughs> to hire this assistant, have it do heaps of work and have the output, you know, in two hours of what somebody in eight previously could have done. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and 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 coming full circle as we bring this episode to a head, coming full circle, the ability that that it has to allow people to actually make their dreams tangible, it makes a lot of people's dreams gettable all of a sudden, which is just such a cool way and it's such a it's such an inspiring way of looking at this thing that that the that, that masses are being feeling threatened by and when it first got when it was first getting talked about i think the first time i heard someone talk about it on stage was it was like maybe 2015 16 or something like that and it was a whole load of scaremongering right it was a whole load of scaremongering if you don't get your then you're going to be out of a job and blah 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 um but the fact that now we have grown and we have given ourselves the chance to actually pay have a look at it properly the ability to have that allow you to go after your dreams is is quite tremendous and and sam and and i don't want to end by saying this i think the the example that you're setting um in playing with it publicly um is really helping a hell of a lot of people in the real estate space but uh, if you're not in the real estate space please just follow Sam and what she's doing with AI powered agents. Cause it'd be, be, be applicable to any business person or any, any person in, in any profession, really um, go have a read, go have a watch because the vulnerability in which she articulates her opinions on certain things is, is tremendous. And it makes it a lot more palatable for those of you that are running scared at the minute um um from ai and trying to you know shove their head in the sand um so sam look thank you so so much uh for joining us on uh, high performance human podcast today i i i can't thank you enough for the work that you're doing the example that you're setting uh for the real estate space and beyond and and for me you you know in many ways you you exude the the four things that 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 really come to mind for me when it comes to high performance but the ability to go after your dreams team is is something that i'm certainly going to have ringing in my ears for a long time so thank you so much sam i really really appreciate it thank you thank you for having me